Hey everyone, my name is Perry and this is Ocean Capable Small Sailboat. If you're new to the channel, this is the Scow Bow Mini Cruiser sailboat that I'm building. It is constructed of PVC foam core between fiberglass skins. This is the foam sandwich construction method. Basically my mission here is to build a strong, trailerable, 14 foot sailboat that's watertight and custom built to cross oceans. Now this is going to be my last build video prior to the launch and the big task here is to build a mast and I want to try and finish that up within the next week so that I can launch next week. I always knew that I wanted to make my mast out of some carbon fiber tubes and adapt them in sections to go together. However, buying prefabricated carbon fiber tubes was quite expensive and they're a bit difficult to find and have transported to you. But a very plentiful source for carbon fiber tubes are windsurfing masks. And I already know that some people are going to be groaning and thinking that this isn't going to be strong enough. But there's a couple of things you have to consider. One is, as you'll see here, I'm going to be reinforcing them to make them stronger. And also that we're dealing with a very small sailboat with a small sail. It's around 79 square foot sail. So the boat's smaller, the forces are smaller. So I'm going to be adapting three sections of windsurfer masts to make my mast. If you're ready to see how I do that, let's get going. So these are the main components of my mast. I've got one full windsurfer mast here, which is five meters or 16 and a half feet. Then I've got an additional bottom half section from another mast. I'll cut this one shorter and insert it in the bottom of the mast to the left. And on this end you can see the inserts that attach the sections together. The first step is going to be to cut the bottom section to 1.7 meters or 5 foot 7. That was easy enough. I've got the length I need. Next, I need to thicken this up by about one and a half millimeters so that it fits properly in the next section of the mass, the middle section. And so at the same time I do that carbon fiber work, I'm going to make the pad eye for the mast head that'll secure the head of the sail. All right, I've got my work area set up. Some new uh, five to one epoxy scale. I've got 18 pieces of six ounce carbon fiber that I'm gonna use to make the mast head. And then at the same time, I'm gonna wrap this around to get three layers on this mast insert. Then cover it in peel ply, plastic sheet, and then some duct tape to get it nice and tight. Okay, so that's the bottom and the middle section of the mast joined. I was surprised that worked out so easily just with a little sanding. So now here's the top section and here's the 18 pieces of carbon fiber I put together. We're gonna turn that into the masthead with two holes for tying on sails. Well, that is a serious, strong piece. So let's measure this and see what thickness 18 layers of six ounce carbon fiber gets us. 4.4. I was shooting for five millimeters, so a bit thinner than I thought, but let's see what we get after it's attached to the mast with more carbon fiber. That is really cool and quite easy to make. 
Now I just gotta drill some holes. Let's check the final thickness. Got about five and a half millimeters. Yep, other side, five and a half. So let's take stock of things here. I've put it all together. I've got one bottom assembly of a windsurfer mast cut down to about five and a half feet. And then one complete strong windsurfer mast. This is the lower section and the upper section, which is 16 and a half feet. Put together, it's 22 feet. And this bottom section, I added a bit to the insert so it would fit in perfectly. Now, of course, this one needs to be beefed up a bit because the mast isn't intended to be 22 feet long, but I figure if I double the wall thickness of this one, then it should work well. So I'm gonna double the thickness of this and add a sleeve joining the two on the outside attached to this one to better reinforce it. And of course the bottom of the mast here will be inside the boat. So the mast tube goes all the way to here. This is the top of the mast tube. That's the bottom, which will be down at the very bottom of the hull. I'm going to start with a good 60 grams of epoxy. At this point I've already epoxied on the first half of the carbon fiber, and from here I'll show you how I attach the final sheet. I've measured the cloth so that this will add 7 or 8 extra layers, doubling the current wall thickness of the tube inside. I did also add a few extra layers where the deck will meet the tube, since this is where the most stress will be. Once I've epoxied on the cloth, I mix up some epoxy thickened with fume silica to the thickness of a milkshake. Then I coat the tube in that before applying the peel ply. I'm going to skip wrapping this one tightly with tape, because I've found that since the cloth on the tube is so slippery, it ends up getting wrinkled with that method. So this time I'm just going to firmly roll peel ply on and then wrap it in plastic. Let's see how it turns out and what final thickness we get. At this point I've done some sanding, rinsed it off, and now I'm letting it dry. The diameter before was 51 millimeters at this end, so let's see what we got now. 57. So we've added 6 millimeters. Even better than I hoped. Next up, I've got this very serious looking piece of G10. One centimeter thick. Super strong. And this is going to be the pad eye for the down hole of the sail. So I need a hole here and a hole here. This hole is for the roller reefing line that rolls up the mast and reefs the sail. And so I got a diagram here to better explain it. Here's a sail and it's going to have a down hole here attached to this pad eye and then this pad eye gets the roller reefing line that's going to wrap around the mast right there. To help with building these parts, I've sketched them out in one-to-one -one scale. So in blue here, I got the mast at its current thickness. The orange is the mast tube, and this is the wave diverter, so that if a wave sloshes on deck, it runs up the mast tube, gets caught in this trap, and flows back down. And then green is the deck. So I'm going to have kind of a rain diverter that attaches to the mast here, so any rain or splashes of seawater that come down the mast will be diverted over this way. And the other important thing I need to do is fill this gap, at least for maybe about this much space, with something so that the mast stays centered and can spin in here. So I'm going to see if I can make something to fill this gap. I'm going to carbon fiber this bowl to make my rain diverter. Nobody tell my wife. All right, so I got the layup for the pad eye there. And then on top of a bowl, I added a bunch of layers of carbon fiber, and then another bowl on top with a weight to press it into the form. Okay, moving on. Now I got the middle tube here and the bottom tube. And now that I've doubled up the thickness of the bottom tube, I'm gonna make a sleeve that's attached here and not attached here. 
it's going to be 30 centimeters to here and 30 centimeters over here so a foot and a foot basically and that'll just help add stability so i've taped the seam let's really hope that we can get this thing apart that's the real worry is getting it apart after it's cured next a spiral wrap of masking tape next i added four or five layers of saran wrap and last of all, I'm going to do a thin layer of petroleum jelly. There we go. The sleeve is all done. Probably about seven or eight layers on there. One continuous piece wrapped around. So we'll see if we can get that off after it cures. All right, this may look a little funny, but I'm going to let the car do the work for separating these tubes. Got the line here. Going to go into the backyard. And then... Tied a rolling hitch to the bottom tube and another one to the top tube with some uh, rubber wrapped around here from like a tire inner tube to a tree. Okay, I'm all hooked up. Hopefully I don't break anything. First attempt didn't work. This line slipped off the rubber. Oh, it just popped off. I missed it. I used the heat gun. So I was just waving the heat gun for about 60 seconds and it just slid right off. What a relief. As you guys may know, this rig is a Jungstrom rig, which means the mast spins to furl up the sail around it. So I use two tactics to help the mast spin. I've got a bearing on the bottom, so there's a pin that goes in here, and this is a Delrin uh, thrust bearing. And the pin looks like this. You can see me installing it here. It's a stainless steel piece that a buddy of mine, Mike, made. And then the second thing is up where the deck meets the mast. Here, I'm going to thicken this up so it's kind of a close fit. And I'll do that by wrapping this rope around it with epoxy and then about two layers of carbon fiber over it. And then I'll add a graphite powder as the last step tomorrow, a coating of graphite powder over it to help it spin easily. Well, that went well, and I've covered it in some saran wrap to finish up, make it nice and tight. All right, let's check the width of this because the maximum width I could have was 74 millimeters and still have some room for spinning. So what I come up with here is 72 millimeters, which is gonna be perfect. That'll allow me a little space to add a layer of graphite powder mixed epoxy, and that should spin very smoothly. All right, in the mast tube, I've just applied some of that graphite mixed epoxy and coated the inside of the mast tube where it's gonna meet that bearing. And most importantly, I've got the graphite layer on the bearing itself. And also the rain diverter is carbon fibered on. So put a nice fillet and then just two little layers of carbon fiber. All right, at this point, I've sanded everything down, wiped it down with acetone, and I'm ready to paint. I'm gonna be using the topside primer in gray and then wet edge topside paint in black. I've got a final graphite coating on the upper bearing now, so it's looking really pretty. I wanted to show you guys. Alright guys, thanks for watching up to this point. Here's the final look at the assembled mass. The really cool thing about this is that it does break down into three parts and through a six inch hatch in the transom of the boat, I can actually 
pass these pieces into the hull and store it in the cabin for trailering. So tomorrow I'm gonna to launch the boat and we will put this to the test. If you enjoyed the video and you wanna support, a good way to do that is through Patreon. Those guys watch 24 hours in advance. And there's other ways to help out the project down in the description. But hey, if nothing else, leave a like on this video and a friendly comment, and I will see you guys in the next one. Mr. Yes. make all preparations for getting underway. Hey, uh, what's that? Home. Oh. Public, get back to your station or I'll have you shot from your stairs. Well, shoot some!